Hey guys, happy new year. And I'm excited for today's guest, Hannah Chapman. She's a CFP. She's got a fantastic slant on helping individuals find financial literacy, financial freedom. Today's talk is going to be all about money mindset, money stories, uh, human design. And I'm excited to welcome her to the show. Welcome, Hannah. Hi, Christopher. Thank you for having me. Super excited to be here and happy new year. Yeah. Happy new year too. And um, I like to kind of lay the groundwork and set the stage for a fantastic conversation. And so tell people about your background and your story and what you do. Yeah. So I am a certified financial planner. That's the CFP. Um, and I've been in the financial industry uh, since 2007, 2006, if you count my year when I started in banking. Um, <laughs> and I moved over to you know financial services and financial planning uh, specifically in 2007. Um, so I've been in the industry for a long time. And what I have noticed over, you know, those 17 years at this point um, is that so many people, especially business owners, entrepreneurs, are really attached to their stories about their money, about what's happening with their money. And when we would do the planning, so I'm, again, my background is in financial planning, we would do all the charts and the graphs and when do you want to retire? How do you want to, you know, provide for your kids for college? Um, and we would make these beautiful roadmaps, right? So save X amount of dollars every month for this much time, you'll get exactly where you want to go. And then when we would meet six months or a year later, the progress would not have been made. And so what I kept noticing over and over was that, especially with business owners, we actually need more support in the mindset aspect of what, you know, what we are dealing with, the emotions that come up with money, even more so than the data and the strategy. So they go together. The strategy is important. Um, the graphs and the charts are great. It's good to have a visual rep representation of where you're going. But unless we actually meet you where your feelings are coming up about what you see in the charts and graphs, unless we address that fully, we actually don't see the transformation that you would expect to see or want to see when you are going through that you know, financial planning process. Yeah, it's it's so interesting because uh, you know I love um, introspection and I sometimes catch myself you, you know rationalization you know lying to myself. So you talk about human design and how it influences your approach to financial planning, and um, I'm really curious what human design is and how you use it. Yeah, so human design is it's like a synthesis of different mystical traditions. So it's got um, an aspect of Western astrology, uh, the Jewish uh, Kabbalah tree of life, the Hindu chakra system, uh, and the Chinese I Ching as well. And they're all fused into one beautiful chart that shows all these aspects of who you are based on when you were born and where and what time. So again, this is there's definitely a mystical aspect to this. Um, and what I found when I was, you know, researching this on my own, I had gone through a lot of personal growth and was going through a big growth transition phase in my own life. Um, and I had, you know, I, I have always loved personality tests. I've always found them to be really insightful in different ways. And when I found human design in particular, the way that it allowed me to understand myself and my own like decision-making processes, um, my own proclivities, tendencies. Um, it was like reading, you know, having just that chart read. For, it was like seeing myself truly for the first time and being able to accept it. It was, you know, I and this happens when I tell other people, you know, about their design, the tears just flow. It's like this, the tears of self-recognition. Like, oh, this is this is me. This is just part of who I am. I don't have to suppress this aspect of me. And what specifically what I was noticing uh, with human design is I was um, researching it. I always dive headfirst into things. That's like when I'm interested in something, that's part of my design. I'm a manifesting generator. You know, so I get really excited about something and I follow it. And if I follow that excitement, it will lead me down all kinds of cool paths. And as I was doing that and I started researching, you know, my husband and how we connect and what his decision making process is versus mine and how those seeing how sometimes those would conflict with each other. Um, and then my kids and learning about them. 
And after I went through all of that, I started uh, working with my clients. And so like introducing it to different clients who I'm like, oh yeah, they're totally into this, right? Um, and the more I started working with it, with clients in in tandem with our financial work together, the more I was noticing that especially the decision-making process, it was so impactful for people that how we naturally make decisions, a lot of times we're taught by someone who has a different decision-making process than we do, right? So our parents or our spouse, you know, comes comes to decisions differently and that can lead to us not understanding or trusting our own innate um, wisdom. Mm -hmm. And when we come to financial decisions, that's what leads to the, you know, buyer's remorse or even the, the, fear of missing out that will like get you going too quickly and then and then you regret your decision um, or the regret of not going for something when you know you really should have, right? Where you knew you felt that pull to do something, but then, you know, someone else said, that's not logical. I don't understand. So you step back and you don't do it, hmm. right? And so when it comes to financial decision-making, again, I feel like that's one of the places where people have the most uh, trouble the most emotion that comes up around, you know, this thing is happening in my life. How do I know what the right decision is? And human design and understanding your own unique design will really help you tap into what your specific uh, decision-making process is. Yeah. And one thing uh, kind of for the audience is why does, why does money evoke so much, so many emotions? Like, you know, some have fear, some have greed, some have uh, these stories. What are some common money stories that people carry and why, you know, why is it people so emotional around money? How do you guide, guide your clients in overcoming these narratives? Yeah. The, the biggest aspect with, with money stories that I find is, is that it's not necessarily about the money itself. It's not about the dollar amounts. It's not about the ability to pay a bill. You know, I mean, you can put it that way, right? Some the stress of it can feel that way. Mm -hmm. But the money story is actually much deeper than that. So when we have something happen in our business or in our life, um, let's say you're a business owner and an employee leaves or, you know, someone's not paying their invoice on time. Um, you have accounts receivable that you might have to write off, right? Like whatever's happening, that's the that's the circumstance. Mm -hmm. And our initial reaction to that, right, that fear um, or maybe anger or maybe disappointment or, um, you know, whatever kind of comes up around that is it's the reaction, but it's not the story. So the story underneath really relates back to our sense of security and money itself. So when, when we go all the way back to, um, you know, age zero to seven, mm -hmm. if we look at neural, um, neural uh, development, when we're very, you know, very young little babies, we are not understanding what money is, mm -hmm. but we understand what security is. We understand if our caregivers are stressed or if they're happy. Um, we understand, you know, what it what it means to have enough food or not have enough food. Mm -hmm. And we pick up on those aspects. And that is what actually starts to imprint our own money stories in our lives. Um, for me, I'll give a slight example. Mm -hmm. My parents were entrepreneurs when I was very young, um, most of the people in my family were aunts, uncles, grandparents, both sides of the family. And things were not stable when I was very young, especially that zero to seven. Mm -hmm. And things got better as I got into junior high and high school. You know, the businesses grew, things were moving along a lot better. But when I was really young, there was a lot of scarcity in my household. And it gave me the imprint that money is hard to make and hard to hold on to. Mm -hmm. And so that led me actually to like saving every dollar that I ever got for a birthday or, you know, from relatives. Yeah, I would, I would be the little, you know, 10 year old with like $400 or $500 in savings because I would get money and I would hang on to it. Uh, mm -hmm. And I was scared to spend it. Right. And so it was like this sense of um, almost that sense of saving, that sense of like financial planning, quote unquote, uh, started <laughs> back then. But in that in that sense of like, oh, you have to like hold on to it because it's not safe. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be there. Mm -hmm. And so for me, 
recognizing that in myself when I started my own business, you know, even when I became a financial advisor and was like coaching people through a lot of this, when I first started, I didn't, I didn't know about my money stories. I wasn't aware of them. Um, I, you know, just thought, oh, everyone wants to be able to save more, right? So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to figure out how you save more and help people figure out, you know, grow the balance, grow the balance, grow the balance. <laughs> Right. And that's like a lot of financial planners, I think, are in that mindset. Mm -hmm. Right. That's that's all that matters. It's just how do we grow your balances um, and get you get you to where you want to go. All of that. Right. It's wrapped up in there. But there's always this feeling of scarcity that goes along with it. If you really unpack what the motivation is, the motivation is still fear. Mm -hmm. And so what we do when we're when we're looking at this, when we're feeling that initial reaction of fear mm -hmm. is we actually go back in. So along with, you know, human design can play a role in this. I also do a lot of um, inner child meditations and, and regressions and helping people tap into, okay, what's the story that's actually coming up from childhood mm -hmm. and how does it relate to what's happening right now? Mm -hmm. um, really interesting stories have come up from clients that when they come back out of it, they're like, oh my God, that was my mom. Oh my God, that was my dad. I, I didn't even... I didn't even put these together before, but that's, you know, what I felt when I was 10 is exactly what I'm experiencing now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so when we address it, when we notice it, mm -hmm. it's giving us the chance to say, oh, hey, I see that you're scared. I see the 10 year old part of me is scared mm -hmm. in fear. And, you know, the 35 or 45 or 55 year old version of me has been through this before. And I understand that it's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And so that way you can, you can detach from that fear response and move forward in your, your wiser brain, right? We're not reacting anymore. We're now responding from a place of, of power. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's very, it's so interesting. And I, you know, I, like I said, I like to catch myself as well when I'm rationalizing, rationalizing or, you know, you know, making up these stories and where these influences come from it all comes back from childhood trauma um everything but um this is uh quite interesting is this idea of um as an entrepreneur yourself and you you specialize in working with entrepreneurs what um unique financial challenges do the entrepreneurs listening face and how do you tailor your advice to meet their needs so this is really really interesting it's actually a huge gap i think in the in the financial planning landscape uh -huh. because business owners do not always have um you know a ton of assets already mm -hmm. a lot of times for business owners their business is their asset and they haven't quite figured out how to pull money out of the business in order to build their own personal wealth mm -hmm. um, and build stability. And so there is a significant percentage of business owners that will build an amazing business, mm -hmm. will sell it for multiple tens of millions of dollars, and have never had a financial planner before mm -hmm. because they didn't have, you know, a million or two million two million dollars of assets to get in the door with a you know a solid financial planner who would then do the financial planning process and that i i really feel like that's such a disservice to business owners because they have different needs and one of those different needs those different challenges that you mentioned that i've noticed especially with service providers and people who um you know have employees and are building awesome businesses. Um, one client that comes to mind, she's a law firm owner and she has, you know, several employees building beautiful business. Um, she was, you know, making close to a million dollars in revenue when we started working together, but wasn't paying herself regularly. She would take draws occasionally, you know, and work on and have a line of credit. And then she would take a draw and pay it down and then live on the line of credit and then take a draw and pay it down. And there was always this feeling of stress, instability, even though she had a business that was actually like, like knocking on the door of seven figures. Mm -hmm. um, and I have seen this actually over and over again. This is not an isolated case mm -hmm. because we are built to, as entrepreneurs, a lot of times we actually pay everyone else before we pay ourselves yeah. and take care of ourselves and our families. Or we'll take, you know, we will figure out how to take care of the family, but then we really are depleted. And it's not, there's not a good balance 
financially. And so one of the big pieces, and I would say for a lot of my clients, it's almost our like first year of working together. A lot of times we're not really working on the wealth building part just yet. Mm -hmm. We're actually working on the, how do I make my business stable, sustainable, and how do I get myself on payroll? regularly, whatever structure their business is, whether it's an LLC or an S Corp or or whatever works, we want it to be regular, right? Uh So it doesn't mean necessarily you give yourself a W-2 if that's not the type of business you have, but you are paying yourself monthly in the way that you can support yourself abundantly, that you don't feel scarcity every time you go to check your checking account balance or pay your credit card, right? You're like, oh, this is great. I know how much money I spend. I know how much I need. I'm pulling that in every month for myself and still supporting the business. So that's a huge part of the first, I would say the first aspect of what I do with a lot of clients. And then from there, we can actually build out the, what are your cash reserve needs so that you have buffers and you have the stability. You need to get off the entrepreneurial roller coaster of income that your your income is probably still, the revenue rather, is still going to kind of do this thing, but we can create stability in your income regardless of what your revenue is doing. So that's that's the next step. And then we are building building towards how do we fully fund our retirement accounts? How do we fully fund, um, you know, the lifestyle that we want to live in the future? It's a building process. Mm, yeah, I love that. And kind of, um, you know, kind of ending it, you you mentioned prosperity as a key focus in your work and what's your definition and what steps do you recommend for individuals to align their plans with their broader life goals and values? Yeah, so I get that question a lot, you know, because I talk about prosperity and abundance and, you know, people ask, well, what's your definition of prosperity? <laughs> and I sat with that for a long time. For a while, I was like, huh, I don't know. Let me, let me like, Let me sit with that and see what actually comes up for me. Um, And when I think about prosperity, it means being able to give, right? It's not about what I have necessarily. It doesn't mean I have, you know, X amount of dollars in the bank saved in all these different places. That feels great, sure. But that doesn't mean that I feel prosperous. People can have as much money as you can count and still not feel prosperous. So what does that actually mean? It means that you're able to give generously of your time, your money, and your energy Mm. to the things and the causes that actually matter to you the most. Mm -hmm. And that's what then brings fulfillment. That's what brings that feeling of prosperity is when you have, you know, maybe it is, maybe you love to give your time right? Maybe, you know, for a lawyer, maybe they they actually love doing pro bono work and serving people that couldn't otherwise afford their services. That's giving of your time. That's also giving of your energy, right? Mm-hmm. And then for some people, it is the money. They want to be able to, you know, write that check to fund that new entrepreneur or, you know, give those micro loans or invest in their community or create that private foundation, right? And so it's that ability to feel that you have more than enough, that you are overflowing and you can give from the overflow of your time, money, and energy. Yeah. What a fantastic way to end it. How can people find out more about you and check out your work? Yeah. So you can go to my website. Um, that is at X, the numeral two, wealthplanning.com. It's pronounced X squared wealth planning. Um, I'm also on LinkedIn. Um, it's Hannah Chapman, H-A-N-N-A-H, and then Chapman, C-H-A-P-M-A-N. Um, and Instagram, YouTube, all of the, all the socials that you can find me anywhere. Um, but yeah, I really, I love to talk with people from my website. You can book a consultation for free to get to know me a little bit and see if it's a good fit to work together. Yeah. And for all the audience out there listening, Hannah, really interesting slant on, um, coaching clients with financial planning. Uh, I love the idea of human design. All of her resources will be in the links and show notes. Be sure to give her a like and follow. And with that, thanks so much for coming onto the podcast. Thank you for having me.